Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to White Rose Creations. This is the Astro Tarot and um, I'm pretty sure many of you have already been um, listening to my astrology um, over on Astro, um, Astro Tarot with Serona Rose. But um, I decided to bring it here and just kind of centralize everything and just make it easier for people to find me under my company name. So, uh, it's, it's been a minute for me and I did take a little bit of a hiatus as I needed to take a break. I needed to do what a lot of people were doing is stepping back and, and taking care of themselves. So, I felt the need uh, to give a um, an astro uh, report about what is going on in our stars. So, um, I think, you know, uh, last year, the beginning of last year is when I pretty much um, quit doing the astro tarot shows. And honestly, it, it was a well-needed break from you know things that I was going through and things that you know reading these charts and taking this energy in because this is intense energy and you know this affects us it affects our world in many different ways and you know for me last year brought a lot of change you know I went through uh, many of you may not know but I went through a move and I'm sitting out here in my um, screened-in back porch and here in the marshes, and and it's lovely. It's really lovely. We had a, a thunderstorm today, and it was nice, so everything's nice and fresh, and um, it's very welcome at this time. So... You know, as far as all the intense energies that we had last year, you know, that was the lineup. That was what, you know, I had been, you know, talking up of what's happening, the alignments with the aspects, with all of those different eclipses that happened. And, um, yeah, it all, it all, um, it, it all equals something. And as we're in the age of Aquarius, you know, we are in the beginning stages of change. And with change comes what? Chaos. So, without further ado, let's get on um, with the astrology. I did have to jot a few things down so I wouldn't forget everything. Um, we are going to have, uh, tomorrow, we are going to have a full moon in the zodiac sign of Leo. So that'll be January the 28th at 2.16 p.m. That's Eastern Time. Um, the moon will be full at 9 degrees of Leo. And I like Leo energy. Leo energy is, it represents our heart chakra. Um, it is the sun. So it is about the self. So, January's full moon is um, normally called the wolf moon. And if you go by the Celtic tree calendar, um, this full moon will take place during the Rowan tree month. Um, this moon's energy, it will bring about some drama because, you know, Leo is about center stage. I'm not messing with you, Leo, so don't get your feathers ruffled here. You know, Leo can Leo's energy can be dramatic, and it can bring drama. But, you know, let's look at what the Rowan tree represents. Now, the Rowan tree is, um, it's known for um, protection. Um, it gives a protective um it has a protective energy to it. Um, it has great strength. It can aid in the success of new adventures and new journeys. Um, but most importantly, this moon is connected to the goddess Bri. Um, and that is B-R-I-G-I-T. 
ID. Many people call her Bridget, like Saint Bridget. Um, she is one of those goddesses that just kind of transferred over um, from, you know, one to another. So, in an Irish legend, it is said that she had arrows made from that sacred wood, the Rowan wood. And when she would shoot them across the sky, they would mimic the seasons, spring to summer, then fall into winter and summer. So as she shot the arrow up, spring, summer, as it begins to fall, we go into fall or autumn, um, autumn and winter. Not an ottoman, but autumn. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Ooh, and Freudian slip, huh? So, now as our sun is growing stronger each day, uh, the days are slowly becoming longer. Uh, we feel the need to go, um, we're feeling that need to um, go forth or, at our, from our rebirth that we had at the winter solstice. The energy of that is like a quickening energy. And this is a stirring of energy within, and, and it's beginning to bring on the energy of spring. But not yet. It seems that there's something else that's missing. So, what is missing? The Rowan tree is the tree of power. And this lady of the mountain, as she is sometimes known, carries the magic of life to flower. Now that's a very important statement that we need to remember during this time. With these energies that are going on, with what's playing out, we really need to remember that the lady of the mountain carries the magic of life to bloom or to flower, I should say. With all this change within our world right now, I do feel as though we are definitely in that cauldron of chaos, in Caridwin's cauldron, um, the cauldron of change, right? But you see, this is where all creation comes from. With the T-square that we have coming up towards the end, um, it's in the process right now, but it's going to uh, form more um, closer to this moon. So with the T-square energy that we have, this is gonna be bringing a lot of tension because this T-square means these planets are gonna be um, squaring off. They're gonna be facing each other. Uh, they're going to be looking face to face, square. So, the full moon in Leo will be squaring off with a feisty energy of Mars and the unpredictable energy of Uranus. And they're both in Taurus. And they will be opposite the Sun, Jupiter, and Saturn, all in Aquarius. So, um, you know, Aquarius is our forward thinker. It is looking into the future and what is going to be good for the whole. Now, Leo is a fixed sign. And Leo, y'all know this. Y'all can be theatrical. And this energy will be putting our feelings and emotions in the limelight. Now, while our feelings are important, we have to understand that others may not find them so important. What's important to you is not necessarily what is important to everyone else. And this kind of energy, it doesn't quietly sit peacefully with Leo energy. On a big plus side here, this is very creative energy. So you could be inspired to create something that you feel deeply about. Now, given that we are in 
you know, Caridwen's cauldron. And we are in this chaos, this confusion. If we can tap into this energy, this creative energy, we can focus it in ways that can benefit us to our betterment. And this is one of the tricks, and I don't want to say tricks because that makes it sound like it's not obtainable, but this is one of the secrets of astrology is that when you begin to sit with these planets and you begin to meditate with this, because, you know, to, to me, it, it's a connection. So it, it's connecting to the planets and to these bodies, these heavenly bodies, and listening to uh, what they are saying to you, you can learn how to tap in that energy. And um, a lot of times, you know, well, I'll say most of the time, if you have your birth chart, you should really start comparing it to what's going on, um, where the planets are, are they in your sign? Because this Leo, this Leo full moon, you know, for Leo, um, those that, who have um, their moon in Leo, this will be great energy for them. This will be a really um, a big creative uh, uh, time at them. It may be something that is um, coming to them, maybe something they've been toy with, toying with working with. Um, you know, coming face to face with that and them having to make a decision of what they are going to do with that. So, um, I do want to talk about the signs that this energy is really going to impact, and that is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Taurus, um, you will have to ba balance your work and your home life. Uh, Taurus can be very focused. It can be, um, you know, too focused at some time. So you need to be careful that you're going to have to balance your, your work life and your home life. Um, and you know, you could be in feeling like you want to make things more comfortable for you as well within your house. Um, you definitely need to set some time aside for you for some downtime, you know, unplug from everything and just really, um, rest your mind, rest, rest your energy. Um, we, we all need a break from all of this different stimulation that's out here. And um, uh, for, uh, for Taurus, there are some things that you need to work out. And the best way to do that is to take that needed time to yourself um, and so you can be able to sort through that. Uh, Leo, this moon is, like I said, it'll be your time to shine. You'll be ready to create from your heart's inspiration. And you could also have some issues within balancing your professional life with your personal life. Um, so, you know, be careful as this moon, um, it will definitely have your emotions on overload. So be careful. Again, try to tap into some creative energy and, and see where it takes you, you know. Uh, uh, be receptive to that creative energy and um, make something that's going to benefit, you know, um, that'll be good for you, that'll make life better um, for you and your loved ones or, or even, and even for those that are outside of you as well. Uh, also, uh, just, you know, just... Be in control of your emotions. Now, Scorpio, um, this is another one for um, being in control of your emotions. Uh, this energy is um, its a good time in your professional arena, as you could be feeling that energy of growth. It could be a time in your profession that you could be growing. Maybe you're getting a better job that pays more. Maybe you're getting... Um, you know, promoted in your job. It's, um, the energy is good for that. Um, it's, this energy is wanting you to, uh, step up and to expand and to, um, do your work that's within, you know, go inside and do that inner work that you, um, all of us need to do. Um, and we do have Mercury retrograde coming up, which is a time to, um, you know, go back and kind of redo everything. We'll talk about that in a minute, but, I'll finish this first. Um, 
Now, Aquarius, this full moon is lighting up your emotions. And, you know, Aquarius can be very, very aloof. And many times this is not a comfortable place for you. Your nature is somewhat aloof and dealing with emotions is not always the best thing for you. It's not your best suit there. Um, this moon offers you a way to learn how to express your emotions easily and in better ways. Uh, you really need to pay attention to your personal relationships during this time. Um, there could be a lot of emotional climaxes that you're going to have to work through. There could be a little bit of feelings that come up that you, you're going to have to deal with that um, maybe you didn't realize that you were feeling. Um, you may have to uh, do that. But this is actually going to help you set better boundaries for yourself. So this is, you know, this is going to be, um, this is going to work out good for you. Um, the moon will also uh, be trying with the south node um, during this full moon. Um, and this is the placement of understanding. So there could be a passion from your past coming into light again. Um, is there something you really wanted before but let life get in the way? Is there something that you wanted to do many years ago that you were not able to do and now you're finding the time to do it? Um, I know I am. You know, I just I completed um, a hypnosis um, class. So I'm in the process of uh, getting myself, you know, uh, certified in that. So this is this is wonderful, um, and this could be, um, you know, this this moon is about uh, shining light on our emotions, and every direct interaction it has with a planet. So. Um, Anything the moon is shining on, shining its light on, it's shining emotions on that. So any planet that it is touching, that is what it's doing. It's adding emotions to it. Um, that energy um, will light up. It'll light up leader, uh, Leo. And, you know, Leo is about leadership as well. Um, and, and this kind of energy, it could represent the self. So this is a big, big call for um, stepping up to the plate for yourself, you know? Um, there's a lot of things that have went on with um, all the craziness in our world. Many people do not have the jobs that they once had, so they're having to find creative ways in order to um, make money, in order to, um, you know, pay the way in the world. So... There's, there's a lot of change coming in, and it's not over with yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so it's important this full moon to keep your emotions in check, as there is a great learning that can come from this. Um, you know, this is a time when emotions will be in the spotlight. So we need to be very conscious of how we speak our truth and and how we release our emotions as well. Remember, what we feel that's important may not be what everybody else feels is important. And when this is saying, um, you know, we need to be careful about how we do this, we don't want to, um, this is a lot of intense energy, so we do not want to um, create or I should say, have this energy to escalate into something that we are going to regret later, okay? So, um, this is a time, like I said, when the emotions will be um, right there in the spotlight now. And the thing of it is, is not only does Leo like the spotlight or the limelight, you know, full moons themselves or a culmination. Um, it is about releasing as well. Full moons are about releasing, right? So we need to let go. We need to release some of that pent up stuff, some of that emotions. We need to work through that, do our inner work, learn how to release that helpfully. Um, because, like I stated, you know, we've got fiery Mars 
in Taurus. <laughs> and we have also unpredictable Uranus that's hanging out with Mars in Taurus. So, you know, we cannot let Mars and Uranus run the show here. That is that you you haven't seen chaos until that happens. You talk about destruction. That is that will not be good. You talk about burning some bridges that you shouldn't burn. So, yeah, this um this energy it does seem very chaotic right now and you know, we are just swirling around in that cauldron of change. So really focus on what it is you wish to create and then align your mind and your heart and your soul with that focus. Release all the junk, release everything that's holding you back. Just, just release that. Um, this is a time that we need to create from our heart, from our ultimate truth. And um, with this, I do want to remind you that if you didn't catch my updates, Uranus went direct on the 14th. And um, shortly before that, about four days before, Eris, which is many times referred to as Aries' sister, if that gives you any hint of that energy, Eris is a dwarf planet. In case, you know, for those of you who do not know. Um, so, as these two went direct, just a few days apart, these, these planets' energies are very, very similar, and they're really going to be felt very strongly. Um, both are linked to truth and awakening. They both are revolutionary, and they want to shift us to a higher state of being. They want bigger, they, or they just want better. They want spiritually better. They both are revolutionary, and they want to shift us to that higher state of, of awakening. So this chaotic energy that will be quite strong, and this energy will be greatly felt all through until, you know, the better part of February. So this is some really big energy here, this truth, awakening, truth, awakening, more and more. Uh, these are both slow-moving planets, so it, that really magnifies their energy. Now, when Mars moved into Taurus on January the 6th, we all saw what happened in the United States. And, um, you know, it, it was there. It was there. The, the, the volatile energy was there. Um, and with what is going on right now, I can, I can tell you that... Um, and I read this to a friend of mine um, a Tuesday night. I read this, and, and I'm telling you, it's surprising at stuff that, that's happened today and come out. But, you know, with all of this stuff that's happening, um, you know, we could expect some cyber attacks, things with the Internet, um, uh, different attacks or attempts in our that cyber, the Internet field. Um, and, you know, I, I do want to reiterate this is eruptive energy. Tor uh, Uranus is very eruptive, okay? With Eris and Uranus both going, um, you know, uh, direct at the same time. Yeah, Pluto's still in Capricorn. Still there. And Pluto enjoys um, destroying, but he destroys in order to create Whereas Uranus and Eris like to, they like to break down. They like to shock away. And it's that Uranus is like that lightning bolt that brings, change, that makes change happen immediately. But um, it's, it doesn't happen immediately. We all know that. It takes time. It's just that direct, bam, it's happening. And it takes time for, for us to catch up with that energy. So... Um, this is, we have to understand that what is going on is, um, done to help us find the truth and to help us, um, 
see to help us have that clarity there's a lot of truth seeking energy within our astrology reading so and and unfortunately for us humans we tend to not want to change until we have to until something makes us so uncomfortable that we have to change um you know we we have to wait until it's pushed in our face to make you know gives us no other better choice than just to do it Unfortunately, that's how many of us um, are, and we need to change that. We need to understand that um, change is okay. It is a constant. Um, in preparing for these energies, I will say that we can be more conscious of what's coming at us, so that way we can be prepared. Um, we'll be able to work through them easier. Um, some more aspects I want to talk about with Uranus is uh, Jupiter. Um, they squared on the 17th. Now, Jupiter is expansive energy. Um, he's the joyous God. He is the God of excess. And when he has an aspect with another planet, he likes to uh, send out that... Um, expansive energy that he has so he will expand the energy of the planet that you know he is aspecting to that he's having that wonderful little conversation with so this revolutionary energy that Uranus holds will be expanded and I will say again Uranus and especially in Taurus this is disruptive energy. It can touch on natural disasters, volcanoes, earthquakes. And it also goes into the governments. Um, Jupiter and Uranus, um, they both like to look forward into the future so both are truth seekers they want the freedom with no no constraints um, they want bigger and better for the future and these two planets they're squaring up they're like all right this this has got to be done this square will be pretty much the whole year um, now it did exactly come um, it was direct on the 17th but they're going to be in this loose square for the rest of the year. So we can we can expand we can expect that sort of um energy to keep playing out. Um the 20th was a very strong day. Uh the 20th Mars and Uranus came together in Taurus. Again, earthquakes and volcanoes. Um very strong energy of uh, the sun uh, Jupiter and Saturn are square. Um, they were square Jupiter and Uranus at that time. And that all of these aspects on the 20th, the Mars and Uranus that come together, the Sun, Jupiter, and Saturn squaring Jupiter and Uranus, that it represents a struggle in between powers. Now, are y'all seeing how this is working out? Those of us in the U.S., you should be seeing this because um, this is a very important year. Our 2020 was a very important year for the United States as um, a lot. It was a uh, Pluto return for the United States. If you go back to 1776 and look at the uh, um, the birth or look at the birth chart of the United States, you'll see what I'm talking about. So. Um, it's crazy accurate, I'm telling you. Um, sun squaring Uranus on the 26th. Um, this is going to, um, that square is going to bring about more surprises, more truths, more awakening. Um, we could probably see some more disclosures coming about. Um, I see a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, unveiling happening, uh, disclosures, um, there's going to be a lot of truth out there, and it's going to seem there's going to be a lot that you do not know if you can or cannot believe. Um, 
this is part of that chaos. This is part of what Neptune is adding to it. So all of these squares, um, you know, they're all about facing off. And I'm going to tell you, so far every planet has had a square with another one. Um, again, squares are intense energy. So, and when we're having this, it's like having a face-off. You know, all of these planets that are squared, they're having this face-off. And everybody has these different ideas and these different perceptions. And there's this pull going on. And we can see this in our world right now. This energy is intense and it's quite fixed. Um, and then the full moon bring those emotions to the head. Um, there could be some uh, shadows that are going to be lit up that are going to be um, quite surprising, bring about a um, true awakenings for people. Aqua with all the Aquarian energy that we have, it's very mental. It's very much in our mind. But Leo is reminding us to listen, listen to our heart. Remember to balance our energy. Um, we can get too lost in our mind. We can get too lost in that, in that mental part of everything. So don't forget about our heart. Don't forget about our heart. We have something unique as humans. And we have something, you know, our feelings, even animals feel. I mean, but look at ours, our way to show empathy. I mean, come on, don't forget our heart. The moon will be opposing the sun, Jupiter, Saturn in Aquarius, and squaring Mars, Uranus, and black moon Lilith in Taurus. So yeah, this is some intense, fiery energy. Um, Venus and Pluto are going to have a little talk, so you can expect a lot of truth that you may not be um, ready to hear. There's a lot of shock, um, a lot of the unexpected. Again, we could touch on um, natural disasters. Um, on the 30th, uh, the Mercury will be stationing in the sign of Aquarius in, a, in pursuing a retrograde motion. This is just a reminder that planets do not actually move backwards, okay? It's just an illusion. Um, what happens is um, the Earth will catch up with the planet and then um, the the um and then earth will just bypass it so that's what it's looking like so um his energy um again when that happens that's his strongest he will be closest to the earth at that time so his energy is very intense um it's going to touch on the areas of communication and commerce mercury is about reflections and with all that we have going on right now we are really seeing the great need for this to happen. Um, there's a great need for freedom, a great need to open up new developments, personally and professionally. Our ability to communicate on multi-dimensions is gonna be heightened. Um, you know, the air sign is about connection. Aquarius is a, a unified consciousness, and that's what we have to remember. Um, I do apologize there. Um, <laughs> My camera cut out. I don't know why, but it cut out. I was talking about Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is a, um, a unified consciousness. And um, let's see, what was I? Um, you know, we can expect, um, again, we can expect a lot of of truth we can expect um a, a lot more um a lot more unveilings and um you know it just has um aquarius's energy is going to be playing out really really big um there's going to be a lot of planets in aquarius so um on um With the Mercury retrograde, I do want to say many people have um, negative ideas about Mercury retrograde, but, you know, Mercury is actually there to help us 
Um, Mercury is there to um, slow things down a little bit so we can take things in. We can, um, you know, reevaluate things, um, reflect just, you know, that wonderful time that we do need um, that we don't always get. Now, with this um, air energy and all of this Aquarian energy, um, we do have to understand that um, one thing very, very clearly is that even though we all have our own freedom of individuality, we also have to remember that we are all here together. We have free will and we do have our ability to be conscious of our thoughts. We have the ability to choose our thoughts and then we have the ability of um, as of how we are going to respond. We have the ability to reflect and to let it help let it help us to grow and to evolve. Um, and um, you know, free will itself makes it possible for us to co-create with life. And, um, but you know, you're gonna have to be conscious of this. It's just not something that's just gonna, oh, look. Um, you know, it's about focus. And that's one thing that we really um, are in great need of nowadays is focus. And I think it's because of the fact that there are so many things that grab our attention we are just it's almost like a sensory overload you know how when you're petting cats and you get static electricity and sometimes they just they'll bite you or they'll just you know it, they get too stimulated and i think that is happening with a lot of people there's so much that's going on they're being over stimulated um and they're not able to properly uh, take in everything that is going on and what it means to them and, and, and what that means for um, their future. And, and of course, I'm, I'm speaking of their loved ones too, because, you know, ultimately, you know, it is going to affect, you know, if you are in a relationship, it's going to affect the other person. If you have children, it's going to affect your children. So it's very important that we kind of, um, and I've been getting this message a lot um, with everything going on. I've been getting the message of, you know, it's time to pull away a little bit. You need to back up. And, um, and you just really need to pay attention. Um, and, you know, this is, this for, you know, this way of co-creating with life, you know, and this way of, of communication, this air energy, you know, there is a broad range that this air energy covers, you know, it covers, um, writing, you know, people could, um, write their first book, you know, um, be inspired to write their first book, um, that we could have a time of discovering new, uh, healing ways and new healing methods, um, is a time to make new music, uh, painting. Um, we could learn new information, um, and it's a time to create, uh, you know, creating new machines, um, uh, designing, developing new technology, parks, schools. You see, there's there's this big array when you are um, when you're, you know, considering that air element and what all that it, uh, it pertains to. So pay attention to all that is going on in your life right now. Um, and, you know, like I said, I've been hearing the message for a while to pull back and just to observe, to be the observer and um, to really learn who you are at a soul level. Um, interestingly, 
This year, all three Mercury retrogrades will take place in air signs. So this is all going to be about communication um, with all the signs um, that are coming together in Aquarius. We are going to be urged to listen to our inner voice. Those signs that we get, um, you know, the hints of inspiration. Listen, if we stay within the mind, we stay within the web of the past. And that's what we really need to understand. Whereas if we are listening to our intuition, if we are able to expand into the future, to be free to explore, it will allow you to spiritually evolve. And all of this rebellious energy that we have, this is about freedom, no restraints, um, truth. So again, this is touching on the soul very hard. And all squares and oppositions that we are having in our stars is, you know, it's just anchoring of this energy of what's going on in our world right now. So we must stay objective because there, <laughs> there is a big tendency to get drawn into all of these dramas and it's just completely unhealthy for you. How many of you know people who turn on the news channel and leave it on all day? And... You know, knowing good and well that it was, you know, it was about the 19th century where um, where the news decided that all they were going to publish pretty much uh, was bad news. Um, what was that called? The yellow, um, yellow page or the yellow reporting, something like that. Um, so don't be drawn into the drama because there's a lot of it. And like I said, a power struggle. So um, it's a time to create your reality. Um, there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of intense, disruptive energy. But Leo says, hey, let's remember the heart. Remember compassion. Remember creativity. Remember evolving. Remember shining your light. Remember that? Um, when we feel distracted or just off, it's going to help us to get out in nature, to, um, you know, take you a walk in the woods, uh, in a pretty park, just to get out there and um, get some fresh air, um, you know, just ground that unsettled energy, lay on the earth if you can. I know a lot of places are still having snow. Um, but, you know, do your best to ground in the best possible way you can. Sometimes a good hot bath is good. Um, you know, you need to bring your energy back to yourself. It's time to bring that energy back, get out of that drama, um, and create your reality. Because what we are seeing, this confusion that we are seeing that's happening is going to keep going on. It's been going on, and it's going to keep going on. And the only thing that we can do is, I'm not saying to turn your eyes from it. I'm saying to observe and not let it control your life and control who you are, control your beliefs. Just because, you know, the TV channel, you have a commercial that's telling you to go eat at a certain fast food restaurant, it doesn't mean that you should do that. It does not mean that. That's the way they're trying to entice you and pull you in. And, and that drama pulls people in. So we have to really, really be careful of this. I'm not saying, you know, just, you know, put our heads in the sand. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying not to get lost. This is going to be um, this is going to be a time where, like I said, you're going to really, really need to pull your energy back into you. And all the astrology that I was doing in Astro Tarot, and I know many of you listened to me there. Um, 
all of that information was leading up to now. And if you could, um, I do believe that because I'd stopped doing the show and she took it off. But I mean, there's some things that you can find on my YouTube channel on Astro Tarot. You can find those on there. You can listen to those. Um, I talk about this. I talk about all of this is leading up to now. Um, those, um, those readings I told you to, you know, um, be authentic, to honor your gifts. Um, you know, uh, not really be worried about the status quo, but to worry about, you know, what are you good at? Many people's had to uh, find those things that they're good at, find those crafts in order to, you know, make, you know, make ends meet nowadays or supplement income. So, you know, um, with the pandemic, you know, that that's hit us, it's hit the whole world, it's put a lot of people in um, monetary restraint, and we don't want that. So, you know, take this time to pull back and to focus on what you do want to create. Um... You know, for me, during this time, I've decided to, I uh, decided to educate myself, you know, to expand on my healing path. Um, and, and I'm not done. I'm still going. There's still some classes that I do need to take. So, I think the best way to put this would be, it just basically comes down to this. Do we want the same old, same old? Do we want the status quo? Do we want the same thing that's happened over and over again? What is it that we want? Do we want to spiritually evolve? Do we want to grow? Do we want to be bigger and better? What is it that we want? Now, you all know with change, it takes coming out of that comfort zone. And that's just the thing. Many people don't want to do that. Many people are comfortable where they are. They don't want to do anything that's going to, um, that's going to uh, stop that from happening. So, they want to do this. So, um... And, you know, for a long while now, um, you know, we've had to decipher what's true and what's not. So there is a definite stripping away of the veil. And Neptune's influence last year and in on into this year, because he is still in his home sign of Pisces. Um, this He just keeps showing us over and over again that things are not what they seem. So step back. Stay in creative energy. This full moon can be very, very positive if you focus. Pluto will be in Capricorn until uh, 2024. And like I said, you know, before, he likes to destroy in order to create. So this is about destruction of the old order. Systems all systems in general, everything old, everything. So, the south node is in um, Sagittarius. And like I stated before, um, they're having a little bit of a conversation. So, um, Sagittarius is about education, uh, law, and the legal. So, you know, here's more. This is what I'm saying. This is touching just about every field every field um and neptune and pisces well you know that's linked to medicine um and health um doctors you know um that field uh, the whole field of health and medicine including herbs this could be a new um this could be a time where a, a new form of healing can come about um 
Uranus is, again, he is one of those that likes to uh, strike his lightning bolt down and just blow things apart. And that's what Uranus does. Um, he, he is saying status quo, goodbye. So I do want to touch on something because this energy, um, Uranus made me think of something and I had to get back to it. I had to like, okay, wait a minute. I need to check this. And this was about the chaos theory. Uh, the chaos theory is about unraveling the old before the new can be birthed. And that's just the simplest form possible. But um, that's the gist of it that I got from it. Um, chaos theory is highly debatable. Of course, there's a lot of things that's highly debatable, you know. Um, but this time is what is reminding me of the chaos theory. And, and it's just, I'm like, oh, wow, I feel that. I feel that. Um, you know, Aquarius, which is Uranus' sign, um, it lets us look forward. It allows us to see both sides of our free will, you know, our light and our shadow, um, our polarity, both sides of it. Um, it helps broaden our perspective. So through every, it shows us that through every cho um, choice, life changes you through everything that you go through good or bad it changes you it changes who you are and with jupiter and saturn they're they're in aquarius and this is about wisdom and learning and the ability to be taught that's the biggest thing i see is that when people come and they want to learn from you, well, they start telling you what's right and wrong. It's like, well, you know, apparently I can't help you. In order to learn from someone, you have to be receptive. None of us know everything. None of us has the answers to every single thing. But if you're going to someone to learn from them, then it would behoove you to... Um, Take the advice of the wise owl. Um, and, you know, with that being said, you know, change is our only constant. Change is hard for a lot of people. And we can choose how this change goes. We have to learn how to ride this energy. And if we ride this energy, if we're not over on the sides, hanging on and getting beat to death by all the debris on the side, um, it will make it will make the ride a lot easier. So that is it. Um, with that, um, I, I, there's with that with that change. You know, many times um, it does take us to uh, an uncomfortable place. And we do have to, the greatest gift of those, really those times of that we suffer a lot, um, that's when the greatest understanding comes to us. And that's wisdom. And that is what we need to see this as wisdom, not as in I'm right and you're wrong, but what is the truth? What is the truth? So that is it. I do hope that you have a wonderful full moon in Leo, beautiful Leo. And um, Hopefully, I can get together and do this again for the next moon. I, I'll do a little bit of an up update. This is kind of long, and I do apologize. I just had a lot to say, and um, I haven't done an, earth, um, an update in a while. And um, it feels really good to get here and talk with you all about astrology, uh, something I really love, and I really love sharing it with you all. So, have a wonderful Leo full moon, and um, I'll see you next time. Many blessings.